This isn't the whole story of how David Wise won his second gold medal at the Winter Olympics. It is just a single paragraph, if anything. A single exciting moment that we got to be a part of. Our adventure begins with 20 hours of travel to South Korea. Meeting up with friends as soon as we got there, and about 20 minutes of confusion while we were trying to figure out how to check into our hotel for the night. So you know when you take a 14 hour flight and you sleep like a baby and you get off the plane all chipper and refreshed? That's not really what's happening here with me right now. But we're here, we're in Seoul. I went to the ATM in my zombie state and I think I accidentally withdrew $3,000. So, we're gonna buy some stuff, but yeah, it's the Olympics, let's do this. So, this is how you get a meal in Seoul. You walk in, you sit down, you, you make confused faces at the waitress. <laughs> The, the waitress laughed at me twice. She just started giggling and walked away, so. <laughs> was that the desk downstairs? That one? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out that coffee shop is also check -in a check-in. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is this where we're all sleeping? Yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> we're like all excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is yeah. nice. <laughs> Don't try to stand up, guys. The next day, we hopped on a train headed for Phoenix Snow Park, where the half pipe was located and where the competition would actually be held. It was qualifiers day, and each athlete had only two runs to secure their spot in the finals. <laughs> So we're at the entrance of the Phoenix Snow Park and we're about to go watch David do the qualifiers for the half pipe and then it's also the women's finals so hopefully we'll see some gold for Team USA. Have a nice day. So here we are at the Olympics, we're having a great time, family friendly environment. It's actually really nice, you know. It's refreshing for once, but you come here to the Olympics in Pyeongchang and it's actually not that bad. You look at the prices up there, and I can get a beer for only about four bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, it's always expensive. You would think it's the Olympics; they would charge you a ton, but yeah. but they're, they're very friend don't. They're friendly here. America. They're friendly here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited about this. is he has his first run is a solid kind of basic run for him that usually scores high enough to get him into the finals and then off of that if he can land that then he'll go bigger to get his placing better. Um, this pipe that you see behind me is, you want to talk into the mic. <laughs> Historically super long so normally for half pipes you can get four to five hits per pipe and this one it's so long you can get six. So it changes every athlete's game plan where they all season, last year they've been training to four or five hits, now they have to add an extra hit per run. And you have to land an extra hit per run. So we'll see how it goes. Um, for comparison, in Sochi, the pipe was so short, they only got four hits, each athlete. So it should be exciting. We'll see what they throw down. Let's go, David! David's first run did not go as planned, so he had one more chance to win a spot in the finals. He said it was one of the most stressful days of his career.
qualified. That's great because that's what we're here for. Uh, he, I think, qualified eighth in the um, total lineup, so we're really excited to go cheer him on a few more days and hopefully bring home some hardware for USA. After the Olympic events, most everybody's in a good mood and they just want to dance. With a spare day between qualifiers and finals, we decided to check out the city, Olympic Park, and the Team Pursuit yeah, okay, Speed Skating okay. Finals. So when you go to the Olympics or really any foreign country, don't get stuck in the tourist trap areas or the, um, I guess, structured eating establishments, I'd say. Go out into the town and experience the real culture and try whatever they have to offer because you'll be pleasantly surprised. I'm not exactly sure the mixture we have going on right here, but it's a soju mixture. So soju is this kind of like rice wine that they make, but a uh, funny thing about soju, it's also unregulated. So you can get something from like five to 10% all the way up to like 20% alcohol. <laughs> so I've been told. So it all depends on the certain batch. Uh, what we have ordered, we actually have no idea. So this is to new things, to new adventures. Good job, Team USA. Look, unfold it to the shape in step five, and then fold the bottom corner on the top of the flat forward. <laughs> it's my face, it's your face, it's our faces. Finals day had arrived. The athletes had three chances to earn a spot on the podium and were laying it all on the line with hopes of bringing home a medal. The majority were having difficulties completing a run. Their minor mistakes had big consequences that reminded the audience how dangerous the sport could be. Even David failed to land a full run after his first two turns. His skis had fallen off both attempts. For his third run, he said he had tightened his bindings to the point that his leg would break before they came off again. As he stood at the top of the pipe for his final run, our group of 20 held their breath, crossed their fingers, and watched without blinking. Let's <laughs> go. 
she whispered to me. So David had three runs today. Fell his first two runs, so he had no score. <laughs> And he came down the third run and landed it clean. Oh, and wow, um, it was awesome. He, he won. He got a 97.2. Alex Ferreira got the second. It was awesome. And we all got super excited. <laughs> Everyone may was have jumping. Down. I may have forgotten that I have a prosthetic leg and slipped on the snow. And fell you and into David the both are bad at landing. <laughs> yeah, today we were. <laughs> But